Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Oh, yeah. Didn't we have a Happy New Year What were you doing? Looking at your phone, Crunch? Happy New Year. Come on, dude. (laughs) He's got a new girl. (laughs) Yeah, Crunch has a new girl. He's paid it. (laughs) I don't don't have a new girl. I don't know what you're talking about. Under the bus. (laughs) Power power and speed, we are. Yeah. Go ahead, Tom. By the way. Do your shtick. We're power and speed, uh, 908-751-0211. Give us a call, and Tad. Like us on Facebook and iTunes, maybe. Very good, Tad. Good nice. job. Is that your New Year's resolution to not fuck that up every week? Nah, I'll forget <laughs> it. Because that that was that was actually no prodding, no nothing. You got. It. I was just looking at you to say, okay, here we go yeah, that, again. That, that Apple thing. We have huge guests tonight. It's crazy. Massive. How did, how did we get Dale Earnhardt Jr. to be on our show? We what? did. <laughs> <laughs> well, you gave him. A, you sent him a scarf, didn't you? <laughs> did I just. Oh. Made, I made that up. Yeah. 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 You know, we we could get into the scarf thing. At some point, but <laughs> hey, I wear a, it's 24 degrees out. I'm wearing a scarf, sissy. Oh, the fuck? Lord. This goes right, you know. This could this could be the other question like we're getting your fingernails done and all that other shit. Like, how many of our <laughs> power and speed listeners wear scarves? But yeah, it's way, way more than get their nails done. Okay, I, you're probably right about that. Fair <laughs> point. Fair point. Oh man, I gotta ask. It's a cheesy radio thing. Does anybody have any New Year's resolutions that they made? Um, I don't, but I heard you're going to try to be less of an asshole this year. No. Good luck with wow. that. <laughs> wow. It's not working. Yeah, <laughs> Low it's not blow. Yeah. Crunch, anything? Um, Actually, I just uh, made a resolution not to tell anyone what my resolutions were. Nice. Good call. Right. Because people get tired of you telling them and it's year after year. So this time, I'm just going to uh, implement them in my life and keep it to myself. And let me guess, Tad. Yes. You're going to vow to eat more. Eat more Roy Rogers as soon as it opens. Uh, I can't. I, I would love to get into how disturbing it is to go somewhere with you to get food. Because it's, it's just not normal, dude. I was lucky enough to get the play-by-play. A play-by-play? Uh, on, on the phone, yeah. yeah. It's just not normal. You When you went back up, he was like, all right, you just went back up. Well, you got to go for seconds. You'll be a pig if you do it all at once. <laughs> Nobody goes for seconds at, right, at any no, fast food restaurant. No, it's when I do the thirds is when it starts getting dangerous. Wow. Well, where are they building the word Rises? Right, 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 on right around the corner. Wow. Yeah, and I, I mean, look, this is what it's going to be. It's going to be 645. Where's Tad? Roy Rogers. Yeah. That's where he's going to be. We're going to have to go drag him no, out. Wait, 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 or wait, roll him. We are having nice. a Chick-fil-A within like a half mile or a mile of it. So it'll be a toss. It's always food. Cars and food. Cars and food. No, no, Car no, 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 no. It's food and cars. Sorry. So tonight yep. we're going to have Howard. He had a lost episode. The lost episode. And so uh, in case anybody missed it, all of our thousands and thousands of uh, listeners, we, uh, <laughs> we did this, uh, you know, Mike's going to do a Corvette. It's going to make uh a zillion horsepower. It's going to be an eight-second street car. And Howard from Redline Motorsports in Florida is going to assist with um, the build. And we did a really good show. It was really funny. And, uh, and Mike fucked it all up. <laughs> well, in <laughs> fairness. I know you did. I didn't in, fuck it no, up. In didn't. fairness. But the worst thing is, the worst thing. I came in here. I turned everything on. We're talking. We're screwing around. You know, yeah. just getting ready. Like usual. I look over at the fucking board. And like half the shit's not lit up that should be. Yep. And I'm like, this is tonight. This is tonight. This is like three minutes before we were supposed to start. And I'm like, are you (laughs) fucking kidding me? And literally three minutes. It was, it was 57. Yep. So I had to pull from backup and everything, but I think we got everything working and people are listening. Mike's sweating. He's like, oh my God, we're going to, we're going to hammer Howard again. Yeah. I mean, he's never going to talk to us. Yeah. He'd like, I mean, I might as well, you know, forget it. Yeah. (laughs) Because it would have been really bad. But we need Howard though. We do need Howard. And I, I thought, <clears throat> you know, a little further about some of the questions that I want to ask. So I, I get a little more, a little more time, you know, obviously between the screw up and now to where we can figure out the direction I want some of the stuff to go. Yeah. Specifically, I'm right back to the transmission thing. Yep. But I got to ask him because uh, I, I wouldn't mind a 4L80, mm-hmm. but you look at other stuff and it's not nice. Well, first off, since we're doing this and it's a lost episode, start off and tell the listeners what you plan to do with this Corvette and what year it is and what you want out of it. All right. It's, um, it's yellow. It's yellow. Yeah. Imagine that. <laughs> pretty, pretty car. Though. Um, 2001. So it's a C5. Yep. So it doesn't have a big tire in it to begin with. All right. Um, I, I've always said that I wouldn't mind buying a kit car if it could be real nice. Yep. You know what I mean? Like 
have all creature comforts, have everything work the way it's supposed to, you know, uh, I don't want to, you know, sound like a real prick, but like power windows, you know, dumb basic shit, yep. but then go a little further than that. And I don't want to hear Tad just zip it. Cause I know the minute that I say <laughs> something, you're going to be like, well, you can buy an Alpine. Shut up. Uh, I want integrated, like a factory, you yep. know, it, like if the car had steering wheel controls, I want it. You know I mean? I want everything to be just nice. Cause for the most part, car manufacturers put a lot of time and effort to make something good. They do. Like the new Camaro. They yep. did a great job, right? so i i i kind of wanted i wanted something extremely fast i want a supercar without spending 500 or 500,000 yeah or 250 or 260 like the green mclaren i really want and you actually have two yellow corvettes sitting side by side one is a newer one one is an older one yes you figure you take the one that was an older one that's just sitting one's a donor and you want to make it a supercar as best as you can. That other one hasn't moved. The idea was, is I was going to buy the new one. Right. And, you know, to clarify for everybody listening, you know, no Corvette socks, you know, no Corvette shoelaces, <laughs> you know, I'm not, not that guy. Um, but I didn't want to put a ton of miles on it because, I mean, I drive my shit. You know, I mean, I like the, the black Corvette I had, the 98, that thing, I broke it. It was my fault. It was low on oil because it used oil pretty bad. And I took a, an off-ramp off 287 that I loved. Loved it. And it's a long, increasing radius off-ramp, so you're just rolling in the throttle as you're going through. And I looked down, and a fucking oil pressure gauge said zero. I'm like, ah, fuck. And I'm listening. I was like, it's okay. I looked down at the oil temperature. It's like 260. And I'm like, ah, fuck. Mm. That was it. Gone. Yep. Yep. Right. But I bought the, the 2001 yellow one. That was a 98. I bought the 2001 one and probably 2004 four, five, six, somewhere around there. And then decided, you know what? That was before he was rich. Yeah. Wealthy. Loaded. Loaded. Donald Trump and I are buddies. We share a helicopter. Yeah. Come on. We were talking about helicopters before. We were, that's why I brought it up. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Mike were talking about, well, we're going to buy a helicopter. He's like, well, we got to buy two. I'm like, why do we need two? He's like, well, what if I want to go somewhere and you want to go somewhere at the same time? What, are we going to fight over it? <laughs> I'm like, all right, we'll get two. <laughs> Christ. Only car guys. We really had that conversation today. I'm not even kidding. I we, believe you. It was it was because of the, the power ball is so high. Oh, yeah. And I mean, the, you know, I, I guess anybody's got a shot at it, but I don't ever win shit. If never. you hit it, you can have two helicopters. <clears throat> I wasn't, I wasn't sure if, anyway. you could, if you could do it nice. Oh, okay. well, let's go back to the car stuff. So, you thought helicopters cost like like twenty million dollars or something? Holy smokes! They don't. They're they're not. You can oh. get a nice one for like one point two. We could afford two of them. We'll get two if we if we win that thing. Yeah. Well, if we win it, we can buy four. Great. Who's getting the pilot's license? You're going to be the butler. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to dispatch him to everywhere? Yeah, I'll, I will dispatch him. I'll make him get on the helicopter and fly to New Jersey to bring back Roy Rogers. That'll make him okay. happy. Okay, mm-hmm. I got He's, no problem with that. He would actually like that. Yeah. So I, I spent the time trying to figure out, well, let, let's go a little further forward. So then I bought the 427 Corvette, and the idea of keeping the 2001 one was so I didn't put a ton of miles on it because right. I drive a lot, and I like to drive. It's not uncommon for me to be, you know, bored at night or just want to think. So get in a car and make like a lap. Like go all like all the way all over the place, like onto the highway, a blast, then turn around and blast back the other way in the highway and then backtrack home. You know, so a lot of times that could be like 120 miles a night, you know, just thinking or bored or screwing around. Somewhere in there, there's a, at least two stops for Diet Coke. Yeah. No, they usually they're closed by then because the running around thing, if I feel the urge is usually like, you know, one o'clock in the morning. He's strange. Yeah. Mm. But it's like, you know, when you got, to, do you drive you to have- think or do you just sit at home and fucking soak your head in something? What I mean? I usually get a Manny and a Petty. <laughs> With a scarf still on? Well, I, With do, a scarf. Yeah, I, yeah. I can relate to dropping the top in the summertime and just hitting I thought he was going to say I can relate to the Manny <laughs> and the Petty. No, I just, you know, the, the BMW just dropped the top, 80, 90, hit the highway, just soothes you. Well, as see, that's guy, the thing. As a car guy. Yeah, I, I've done the same thing. I drive and I think. Yeah, I right. do too. You I know, if you. I got something on my mind, I tend to drive. Right. So the idea of keeping the other yellow one was right. to keep miles off the other one. But you know what happens? When you want to drive to think, you want to drive something fun to think. Yeah. So the other you want one, to drive the nice one. The other one never really made it out of the garage, and I don't think I've driven it more than twice since I got the new one. Right. And the new one, I'm sorry, is kind of a colossal piece of shit. I'm really not happy about it. I mean, it's just it, a lot of hard feelings with that thing. It's just, it's been 
Right. And the listeners, the loyal listeners know the whole story. They know. Yeah. It's a, that's a 427. So it, it is, they, they made 2,500 of them or some shit. So it probably is worth keeping nicer, you know, than, than probably a normal, we made 5 million of them Corvettes. Yep. Um, and you know, a, a person who I will not name, even though it's my new year's resolution, not to abuse people as much anymore, but this dork that I know, um, constantly wanted me to fuck with that one, but I can't bring myself to do that. So the 2001 car is going to be the starting point. Who's the dork? I don't even want to mention his name. <laughs> Fud? Shh. Mm. Mm. He spoke the words. Don't Alan? Even, don't even say it, dude. He is. Well, he, he said I mean, the name. When you, my when buddy. You, when, my you buddy. Say, when you say dork, he, it, he really is the first one that comes Just to mind. pops into your mind. Yeah. That head. Yeah. 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 It's like, you're such a chore. <laughs> <laughs> um, <sighs> so... Inside joke. Yeah. So trying to, to figure out where to go with this, looking, you know, Tom said, you got to look at Howard's stuff. He's got a twin turbocharged C6 that goes in the sevens. I was like, man, could we get something to go in the eights on the street? And Tom like laughed at me. Like, right. yeah, it's like not hard. Not hard at all. No. In Tom's mind. Yeah. So, you know, kind of, we made a game plan over with talking with Howard, kind of where we were going to go with the motor and the other stuff in there. But it still was kind of cloudy and unclear as far as where we should be he's listening no no no, no. somebody these you guys still have man cards don't you or you turn them in <laughs> <laughs> what did, what who said that somebody uh, took a jab at us joe uh D- dysinger oh dysinger yeah better not have been tanner look I- i'll make it very clear <laughs> uh, no scarves no manicures or pedicures there ain't nothing fruity about what's wrong with a scarf anyway he, when you when you get dapper <laughs> when you get dapper you know, you put a scarf on. That's all right. We gotta stop. He's coming to a fucking. <laughs> I don't pod. have a scarf on. I'm He's just... coming to a podcast, dude. Oh. I could see if you had to go for like some kind of, I don't know, like. Well, you know, you have to cover your neck up in this kind of weather. You'd be sick. So, no. some kind of way. You have You're to zip up, level. zip up all the way to your chin. Something. When it gets real cold, this is what I'll be wearing. It's, it's, there's always a good time to look good. Just remember that. <laughs> all right. Well, never, I don't. I, but time is never a bad time. Time is the man. If you look Fly. at all of us, it ain't real hard to to rise above. You know what I'm saying? A scarf is really an unnecessary accessory. No, yeah, sorry. But if it makes you feel special, hey, it does. Have at it. You see the the, the vehicle he drives outside? Oh yeah, with the small disc brakes. That's a dapper truck there. I'm gonna yeah, smack. with little brakes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not for long. All right. All right. Well, Howard is actually on here, so let's grab him. Hey, Howard, you there? Yo, what's happening? Hey, buddy. We will not lose this one, I promise. <laughs> we we already had a technical malfunction when we when we turned to mixing. I was like, I can't believe this, dude. But everything's good. We got like 90 backups, too, so th- there's no way we're going to lo- uh, uh, Never mind. I'm not even going to say it. <laughs> yeah, right. Thanks, Tom. Yeah. So how come how come every time I, I call in, you guys are just talking about like the weirdest shit? <laughs> because we're weird. It's usually that's, how that's, it yeah. usually how it starts out. Well, last week Crunch was before the show started. He's like, "Yeah, I get my fingernails polished," and I'm like, Not "What polished? I get them done, and they put a clear." On. We cannot a, go hold back on. there. A clear of what? Howard, Howard, how are you? Happy New Year. <laughs> you should. You, you guys should bring Barry McGuire in, and you guys can talk about all the different products you can use. There we go. Nails with. <laughs> <laughs> Podcast. Uh, <laughs> well, Howard's a comedian too. Huh? Uh, well, yes, he is. Uh, see, Howard, I, I just uh, and if you do, um, I'll be quiet. I promise. But you don't currently wear any nail polish, do you? No, I don't. I, I've I don't never been involved polish. with that kind of activity. <laughs> have, have you ever gotten a manicure, Howard? No comment. Oh, see, uh, uh, that's not what he asked me. Right, that's that, but that's but two listen, different. Sometimes you got to take one for the team once in a while. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh. you can't make a habit out of it. Okay, you know. see, look, we got celebrity yeah. Howard. He won't tell the truth. Okay, I he mean, we sell testosterone over here, not lipstick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very yeah. nice. Yeah, yeah. Well played. Well played. <laughs> uh. This is what happens when you get too much time off for the holidays. Yeah. Yep. True indeed. True indeed. Disaster. So, Howard, before we get into my whole project. What do you got going on? Anything new? Anything exciting? I saw that, you know, you're doing more with the direct injection stuff since the last time we talked. Yeah, well, GM keeps dumping more stuff in our lap. I mean, we just, uh, we got our hands on a uh, 2016 CTSV that we just uh, baselined this morning, and it's now in the bay for surgery. Um, We got a new Camaro here that we've got uh, some interesting products that uh, we're putting together. Tom's been helping us out with some uh, internal guts. 
Um, I mean, those are, you know, the new Camaro is really kind of like setting the tone for the next wave of uh, car fun. I think everybody's kind of like rolled over from the C7 uh, being out and the Z06. I mean, that'll always continue being fun, but right now the Camaro is going to be hot and the new CTSV is going to be hot. Okay. I'm all over it. How good is the CTSV? Can you say? Awesome. It's awesome. Yeah. It's expensive, but it's uh, really. I mean, obviously, after every model of vehicle, the next year is usually, you know, the next run is better. You know, I mean, the older CTSV was amazing. So you can just imagine with all the integration, with all the technology and the interior fitment. And I mean, you know, the one we got here has got a $99,000 window sticker on it. Wow. It's nuts. Yeah. You know, but it's, uh, I mean, it's serious. It's fast. It's luxury. It's got all the bells and whistles, lights. It's pretty serious car i think the other problem with that particular car unless i'm wrong is it also on that nice sticker that says 90 i think it also says like highway mileage of like 17 and like city of like 13 or 14 yeah. it ain't good yeah i don't i don't know what it was yeah i mean it's you know it's better than it was for and you gotta realize it's a 640 horsepower car they're obviously meeting some standards but i think they also pound you in the ass with the gas guzzler tax on that thing too yeah a couple grand yeah yeah, yeah that gets whatever you that's worth so have they opened up any more programming avenues with the direct injection stuff? Or, um, I mean, they keep adding more stuff for us to get in. I mean, 16 kind of, kind of, you take a step backwards because the uh, software guys have to go back and, like, you know, redevelop all the uh, parameters uh, so we have access again. It's, you'd think that you'd roll from 15 to 16 and 17. It's, you know, if they're not making big changes uh, publicly, you think that there's nothing going on, on the backside, but... You know, the 16 computers is now slightly different than the 15, but it's the same computer, you know, in a similar car. So, um, you know, the car that we sent on the dyno today, I, I had to do some kind of trickery stuff to get around things that we were we had figured out in 15. So, you know, but that's we're just used to that process. Yeah, because usually it seems like the, the software lags behind a little bit. So if you're working on the new stuff all the time, it's got to be a little touchy. Yeah, well, I mean, I mean, the first thing you do when a new model comes in is I go right into the controller and we try to read it and make sure we have what we need. And if we don't have what we need, we try to get hold of our software guys, which have been really good to work with, um, to give us what we do need. You know, otherwise we're we're sitting duck. I can't go in and start tearing apart an engine and making all these kind of airflow modifications physically and then not be able to complement it with the electronics. You know, I mean, we we had that nightmare with the Ford GT500 back in '12 when Ford redid their processor and. You know, guys are coming and wanting Whipples and all kinds of stuff in their cars, and we're like, we had no control. You mm. know, it was, a, it was a nightmare. So, wow. but we're, we're doing all right. Got a lot of the good thing. Is, the good thing is, is coming off of a car like the Z06, the CTSV is, you know, um, it's the it's the same, you know, devil under a different pair of clothing. So it's, you know, we already know the LT4 engine, we know the supercharger, and we already kind of know our way around. So we're going to make much quicker strides with the car. Now, does that have that particular car of the eight-speed trans or no? Yeah, yep, the eight-speed. That's the uh, 8L90E, which is pretty amazing, Tranny. Yeah, see, that's and that's going to be part of the focus of talking about my 2001. I know we can't put that trans in because then you're looking for a whole different controller. I mean, it's a whole different animal. But let me ask you a question before we get into anything with my thing. The In C6 Corvettes, what did they have for transmissions from the factory up till when? Uh, well, the, well, the, the C six started out with a, um, four L 60 in the beginning. And then I think around seven or eight, I can't remember. They went to the six L 80 six speed automatic. And then of course there was the stick. Okay. How is the six L 80 for usability? I mean, it's like, is it, do, do they hold up? I mean, because actually we have a couple of listeners here. One guy, Jeff, he has, uh, it's, what is it? Just an SS. He always gets mad at me because I right. say Impala SS. Yeah. And he's like, no, <laughs> Not. Um, but that has that particular trans. Are they somewhat durable or is it something that you don't even think about? No, I mean, it, you have to contend with it. I mean, it's, it's been stuffed in so many, you know, they built a half a million Gen 5 Camaros, and if it came with an automatic, it had a 6L80 in it, you know? I mean, the G8 had a 6L80 in it. You know, there's a lot of vehicles that sported that tranny. Um, I think that tranny's biggest nemesis was the people that had the laptop trying to control it. Um, it's not a hard tranny to dissolve through bits of information. Um, it's not 
it's not nearly as strong as the 6L90 that came in the Cadillac and CTSV and the trucks, but it also could tolerate some decent power if it was calibrated properly, and that's where guys would just blow chow on it. So I think, if I'm not mistaken, that a 6L80 per GM had a rating of about 540 foot-pounds of torque, okay? And then the 6L90 had a rating of like 705, just to give you a, like a comparison of, of the difference. And, you know, we, we've, we've run 1,000 horsepower through those 6L90s, you know, with pretty decent luck. Um, so that being said, with a rating of 700, you know, 750 wheel or so through the 6L80, it's, it's still okay if it's calibrated properly and you keep it cool. Yeah, and you're probably not worried about dead hooking it every 15 minutes either. I mean, you're going to put a couple passes on this thing and do highway poles. Yeah, but that's the, but to see this leads to the next this, what what some of the research and some of the stuff that I had read, they kind of rated the 6L80 in the same category as the 4L80 as far as what they would handle. Now, I don't know if that's really the case. I started to look it up and I got sidetracked by something on YouTube. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I, yeah. I remember yeah, specifically. Yeah, ended, oh, I ended, ended up looking at Taylor Swift videos. So. Oh, no, it wasn't that bad. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I got, um, I got into that university that I was talking to Tad about and Jeff did it. They, they have all kinds of transmission demos and I was watching like eight speed, like oh, yeah, A's yeah. and transes, yeah. like how they shift. And it's yep. crazy. Yeah. But now what I have read is that it looks like specifically from HP tuners, they call the transmission control parameters a segment and that you could move the segment from computer to computer within a certain range. Is that something that's even viable or is a 6L80 not worth it due to its plug-in ability? That, I don't mean plug-in ability with the car, but I mean a lot of shit you could buy to put it in my car real easy. I mean, if, if you well, say, look, you got to go to a 4L80, stop fucking around, I hear you. You got to go to a four LA. You stop fucking around. <laughs> okay, <There you> go. <laughs> good enough. Uh, but let me let, but let me explain to you why. Because the the six L transes, the six speeds, those are a completely different controller logic than what we dealt with with the four speeds, and a uh, completely different computer. They, they were torque based control systems, meaning that they they knew how much torque the engine was making. Mm -hmm. Therefore, it knew how to make the shift and where to put pressure. Okay. Okay. And so, I mean, you're, you're talking apples and oranges. I mean, could it be done? Yeah, but it's just not worth it, especially if you're going to put any power to it. Um, and I don't know who told you that the 6L80 is, is, is stronger than a, a four, uh, a 4L80, but that's a bunch of hogwash. It might have been something like Wikipedia, like explaining the number of sequence <laughs> of GM. It was something like that. I'm, was, Tom will attest to this. I'm Reddit. very good at reading shit Reddit. and not being able to remember where I saw it. But I, I almost think that I remember that it was like explaining how the designation of the transmissions are broken down. Like 6L80 means this. And it got back well, into the... Segment. The, the segment thing you're talking about, we, we were always able to take a car that came with a, with a 4L60, yeah, and we could put a 4L80 in it, and we did something what's called a segment swap. Yep. But that was back when the earlier controllers housed the tranny function and the engine function in one. Okay. okay. That's, when it, that's when it was a PCM. Now they have an ECM and a TCM. They're completely separate controllers that have to talk to each other. Oh. So you can't, the segment swap thing is not something that's, you know, you're, you're mixing up different genres of, of the development of GM stuff. So, um, you know, once you get into the six speeds, uh, that uses a, what's called the T43 controller. And if you have your car, your one controller runs the engine and transmission in one controller. Okay. And that one, we could do a segment swap to go to an 80 and still run it with the factory controls. Okay. Then that's, then well, that's reference we, your previous statement, stop fucking around. That's what you need. Well, that's why we have. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think part of this conversation is also leading into, is going to lead into power. And if you want to make any significant power, then you got to go with a trans can take it anyway. So that wipes out the last five minutes of conversation. Right. Right. So, I mean, it, yeah, this is in the end, like, again, that's why I brought it up because I know you have so much exposure to the newer stuff and, you know, uh, does it just like letting your fingers do the walking <laughs> on, on the internet, you find these things like talking about the six L 80 trans. And I was like, huh, did that come in a Corvette? And I looked down, it's like, yeah, it's in a Corvette. I'm like, huh. And I was like, I remember reading about, so this I get all crossed up. You read about segment swaps and HP tuners like, huh. 
right, right. <laughs> I got a Corvette. <laughs> but yeah, now after somebody with like Howard's experience tells you, well, yeah, you know, you could do that in certain places, but you can't do it here because you're, you're fucked up. All right. So I, I got it. Well, during this build, Howard, you, you've pretty much uh, told us on the last episode that we lost, but Mike wants a supercar out of his Corvette. And being uh, impressed with the one you have in the sevens, he wants a, a, a supercar that can go in the eights and still give him all of this supercar aspect that he wants. So let's start talking about what do you want out of this 2001 Corvette? I, I want it to stop like it does. I want it to turn like it does. I want, and you know, I was going to say, I like the radio in it. I don't like the radio in it. It's actually got a cassette deck. Yeah, okay. no. yeah that's that, that shit. You know, so I mean, it, but it, it you is. You want it to be yellow? It's a, yeah, it is yellow. Oh, I mean, it's yellow already. But it, it's a factory, <laughs> you bad. know, nice car. Like the last thing I want is a kid's car that like you're dicking around trying to get it started or, you know, you step on the throttle when you're pulling out of the driveway and it's coughs because it's too cold. You know, I want the mannerisms of a factory Corvette with just a whole shitload more power. And, you know, somebody like Howard might be able to say, hey, look, with, you know, a twin turbo system, you can reach this level and still have it very nice to drive. Well, he, you, you know he's on the phone. Why don't you just ask him? I, I was prefacing it for the listeners. That was I'm waiting for him to jump in. <laughs> the listeners were going, man, is Mike going to shut the fuck up ever? <laughs> <laughs> Says the guy wearing a scarf. I'll, I'll twist that thing right around your neck. <sighs> All right. So, Howard, what oh, can... Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Who's wearing a scarf? Tom. Oh, my God, I can't handle this. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it was it's twenty three degrees here, man. You 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 live in Hialeah, Florida. Didn't he live in New York? <laughs> yeah, I know what it's like up there. Didn't he live in New York? He did. Yeah. Now, now he lives in Hialeah. And was he wearing a scarf <laughs> in New York? Probably not. The Hialeah is the funny the funny part of that. I don't know. What's, listen, this whole power and speed thing is just like I don't know what's going on. I mean, now you got you got painted nails. You've got, <laughs> no. <laughs> no paint uh, on the nails. I think, you know, Nishad's going to show up for an interview. <laughs> but, uh, Howard, before you um, before you tell <laughs> before you tell Mike what what you have planned, I do remember you telling us the story about the the stand that you used to go to in New York when you lived in New York. So when you get done with Mike. The, the stand they used to go to, we used to hang out, where you guys used to hang out in New York? Yeah, the car hangout? The car hangout, right. Yeah. Yeah, so I remember that. So I just wanted you to elaborate on that when you were in New York. Well, we can, yeah, because yeah, he, after yeah, you Howard, get done. Well, Howard's originally from up here, in yeah. case, and you know, see, this is what's tough about doing an episode the second time, because your brain doesn't forget all the shit that happened the first time. So yeah. you're, you're always kind of trying to backtrack. We've tried to do it a couple of times, and yeah. it's been tough. Yeah, it's hard. Thank God you two idiots have given us material with scarves and nail polish. <laughs> <laughs> but I just remembered that just now. Like, oh, I remember when Howard said he was. Yep. Yeah. yeah, so he was originally from up here. Yeah, it's only it's only been. Th listen, it's not that long forgotten. I'm just I'm breaking balls. It's funny, you know. It's you know it's, you know honestly for the last you know few weeks I've been trying to break my friend's balls up there in New York, but it's been seventy. So it's been tough. <laughs> yeah, right. Finally, it's cold, and I'm feeling good about it. You know. So, but um, but I, I mean, getting back to your car here. I mean, I, I know we've skimmed across this a few times in some other conversations, but. You know, I, I think the real and only effective way to make, you know, lots of power, make a car docile, uh, efficient as one could be, is most certainly, you know, turbocharging. Um, you know, it, it's just definitely the, the, the superior way to have your cake and eat it, too, and also manage the power. I mean, it's, it's easy to sit here and pump out 1,000-horsepower cars all the time, but if you can't control the power, I mean, you know, all you got is a, you know, a dick extension, really. I mean, that's all it is. You're not going anywhere with this thing. So, you know, turbocharging also offers us the ability to control it. So, I mean, that's that's definitely going to be on the menu. What do you think about, say, a 440-inch, you know, engine with what I was looking at, and you can tell me if this is wrong, uh, but like a <coughs> LS7, I guess, I, what do they call it, an LS7 X head? So it has the additional bolts? Yeah. Uh-huh. LS X head. Yeah. All right. So Just call it a six bolt head. Okay. Because there's a lot a lot of different ones. Okay. All right. <laughs> but I but I, I was looking, you know, look, the easiest way that I always figured out some of the stuff was to look in a GM book. Kind of points you in the right direction. And then you can look at aftermarket solutions if you wanted to. Um I I kinda I'm sure people have gotten the the handle on this with me. I'm a big GM guy. I like, you know, like we always used to laugh about harmonic balancers. Like everybody's like, got to have this one, got to have this one, got to have this one. Look, GM put a lot of time in their damper and they work. 
You know, it's same thing with their distributors. Like everybody wanted to take a GM points distributor out. They never worked. And they went to a dual point, which was a disaster. You know, most people could make that stuff work if they knew what they were doing. So I'd like to stick with a GM head because of integrity. And I'm sure Tom can attest to that, that sometimes the factory quality is better. Yep. Um, so that particular head, the LSX head, the six bolt head, and I, I, the one I saw was an LS7 six bolt head, um, 440 inch motor. I, I read the piece in engine labs about you picking out the camshaft. So that made me feel pretty good. I'd like to talk to you a little bit about it, but overall, I mean, how much power you think can make? Well, I mean, I, I guess you got to, I have to start this conversation. So how much power do you want to make? You know, I mean, you know, it, don't tell me 2,500, which is possible. It just is not going to, it really doesn't make any sense for what you're trying to do. I mean, right. you know, you got, you got to put in, in people's heads sometimes, uh, you know, a sanity check of what a car feels like with a certain amount of power. I mean, we get guys come in here all the time that, you know, walk in and want to make a thousand horsepower and, you take them for a ride in a car that's making high 600s at the wheel and they're screaming like a girl, you know, <laughs> yep. they don't, wow. they don't get it, you know, and all of a sudden you realize you just saved them about 20 grand, you saved their lives and you most certainly saved their marriage, um, to what they were going to get into only because in their mind, they wanted to be in the thousand horsepower club, not realizing that this was like a, you know, it's a gun. Yeah. So, um, you know, and then what happens once we know the power demand that then dictates what do we what do we build this foundation with? I mean, you know, we use a lot of the LSX blocks, the six bolt blocks on cars that are making you know a thousand plus because it's been tough. You know what I mean? I don't have to worry about you know block moving around. It's a good foundation, and of course you put the six bolt heads with it. But you know, a guy that only wants to make you know you know eight hundred wheel, you know, there's other options. So. Right really comes down to you know, what is it you want to make? Well, I mean, honestly, what I'd like to make is I'd like to make a street car that if I put a good tire on it, I should be able to go to the racetrack and get into the eights. So, I mean, then we have, so we have an approximate weight of a vehicle based on a C5 Corvette. We have an approximate, you know, ET in mind, um, based on your experience and what kind of mile an hour you really need to get that car there, how hard they are to hook and how hard you could leave with a turbo car. It should it should give you like, I think Tom always had in his mind that he thought we needed like 1200 tire. I think that's what he thought. No, I mean, we've got a customer down here that we had a C5 for a 99 that we did with a, uh, um, four 16 cubic inch motor, decent sized turbo, single turbo and a four L 80. And he went, uh, eight ninety at 154 miles an hour with a one forty eight sixty foot. Okay. Okay. Uh, and that car only made like 730 wheel. Okay. You know, you got to realize the automatic really lays the power down. You know what I mean? It's, it's amazing. I mean, my, even my Z06, if I go boot that car down the track on, on wastegate spring, which is like, I don't know, five or six pounds of boost, that thing will go, you know, you know, 990 at 148 miles an hour all day long. And, it, and that's making like 600 wheel. Right. You know, so it's, it it's amazing how an automatic will put the power down. You don't need, I mean, 1200 wheel. I mean, you're going to go like bottom eight, <laughs> you know, I mean, but that might take away this, uh, street ability that he's talking about. Yeah. Right? I don't remember the 1200 wheel. I thought, I thought I said I, you had to make about a thousand engine, you know, flywheel horsepower. I, I don't know where that came yeah. from. Yeah. It just came from somewhere in your head. Maybe. Well, well let's shoot for, yeah. let's shoot for take eight, that, eight take 50, 900 at the wheel. And and at eight to nine hundred to the back tire, let's say eight hundred. If he's got a guy to make seven and change, or, you know, can you stop talking like an old guy? What just, do you mean? Just say wheel, <laughs> wheel, say like eight hundred at the back tire. <laughs> listen, <laughs> dickhead. <sighs> I'm just telling you, you sound like a dork. Well, let me explain well, something just, to you. Listen, listen, my dyno always sat in a room. Okay. okay, so we never talked about back tire that's stuff. Okay. So the back okay. tire stuff to me is kind of fucking he's confusing. He's saying it again, right? But it's to say wheel, wheel to the wheel, Thank you. to the wheel. That's all. Happy? Let's, listen, I'm Mike, happy. that Mike. fucking <laughs> scarf right around your neck, <laughs> Mike. Let's shoot for nine. I'm right here. Rear wheel horsepower. <laughs> I think that's a that that's a compromise because twelve hundred rear wheel. I can't imagine. Okay, well, that. I had the number wrong. Right. Well, I'm just saying I, I can't imagine that that what you're looking for with that streetability. Right. From the 1200. So, all right. Well, kind of right. there's the question. Let's go nine. Let's Where, shoot for a number here. If if we were going to shoot for say between eight and nine hundred, can it be docile? Can it be drivable? Can it be nice? 
I can do that with 1500. I mean, it's, you know, that's the, again, this is the beauty of, of, of turbocharging is you just let the turbochargers yeah. eat when they want to eat and don't eat when they don't want to eat, you know? And, and because of that, you know, you don't have to aggressive with a camshaft, which is a big part of drivability is, is in the camshaft, you know? Um, I don't know if you necessarily need a 440 cubic inch motor. I, I, I personally think that motors that are, you know, that big with a lot of stroke and a lot of bore to them just kind of eat up motors a little bit. Um, Agreed. Especially with the stroke gets big and it's like, there's no need for it. I told it. you that. What do you know? Tom will, attest to, Tom, Tom will attest to this too. I mean, a boost motor, you know, ring control is, is a big deal. And yep. when you're dropping that piston out of the bottom of the bore like that, you're just, you know, you're losing control and you got oil consumption, which is part of drivability and life. And then piston scoff and all this other stuff. So, you Dude, know, I, I, I told him all of this, Howard, and he's looking at me like I got a scarf on or something. <laughs> <laughs> I, I believe when we talked about the RHS block, you thought that the way that their liners were were more than okay. Oh yeah, they 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 are a four forty. Yeah, they are. There's okay. no doubt the liners are long enough. Okay, but you still got a real short piston. You still got a short ring stack. And I told you that we didn't and have to go that big. What have I always said, dickhead? Whatever is comfortable, Whoa. whatever we can build Low comfortably. Blow. You wanted to build a bigger motor. I'd like. I listen. I'd make the thing seven hundred inches if I, I could. Exactly in four, an LS package. Four sixteen is fine. You can, uh, Howard. Can he not make eight fifty pretty easily with a four sixteen? Yeah, should be or, doable. Or a four twenty seven. Yeah, I mean a four twenty seven seems to be a good balanced mix because the bigger bore is better for the cylinder head. And yep, it, it definitely helps out with stuff. So, I think this program. I think four four twenty seven needs to be the the badge on the side of the car. Getting vetoed right. on my own car. But, <laughs> but then you then you have yeah. two. You're out. Two versions of matter the fact, just, Matter of fact, Tom, grab his keys and, uh, <laughs> you know. I'll just drive the car down there. We'll get it taken care of and bring it back up here, and he'll, he'll be done. Yeah. They're yeah. both dead. Neither one of them start. Yeah, They're both true. in a garage stuck. Yeah, true. Two <laughs> yellow pieces <laughs> of shit. And there's a blue one in front of my building down there. My brother's, dead that's too, dead, yeah. too. Yeah, the Z06, yep. Uh, all right, so we're at a 427, and you think to be drivable and nice, 800 area, 850 area is fine. Perfect. Yeah. What's the what's the most power you've you've ever like had in a, in a uh, uh, in a car like that? Like what, what are you used to driving? Um, probably, I guess nitrous Pete's Mustang. Yeah. You know, around a thousand. Yeah. You know, I mean, he, here's like if you're worried about scaring me, <laughs> or that ain't gonna happen. If you're worried about me not being able to drive it, that's not gonna happen. No, he's been in fast stuff. Yeah, I've been in fast stuff. I mean, he drives a, a Nissan Leaf every day. So. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> is that who makes the leaf? Did I get it right? Yeah, I don't. Know. I think I it's think we song. should. I think we should shoot for nine hundred rear wheel horsepower, and if it comes in ten, eleven, we're good. Doesn't yeah. matter. Well, I, I don't think you're going to shoot for nine hundred and end up with this. Oh, look, surprise! Saying, eleven. Howard no. might. How it might just do a little something and, and well, give, give you more than you asked for. It's the just, other thing you got to. <clears> the other thing too is, I mean, you know, so the car gets done and it runs on pump gas and it makes, yeah. you know. 825, 850, and then you feel like you want to be a, a knucklehead and really turn the boots up because you have a thing going on at uh, Atco or English Town, and you put some race gas in it and, you know, make another 150 horsepower. I See, mean, that was you know. that was the other part that slipped away from the conversation from last time because that was one of my requirements, pump fuel. And, yeah. like, there were people saying, oh, E85, you could do ma amazing things. We don't have it up here. It's not, not here. Yeah. So, yeah, a, a pump fuel. And, and so, okay, no, that sounds like a decent game plan. Yeah, and he could do two maps for you or whatever, and yeah. And Sonic maps so you can idle through and get your Diet Coke. And oh, God. <laughs> so I Howard, liked it better when you were quiet today. <laughs> <laughs> so, Howard, you pretty much uh, you pretty much have this uh, whole situation in your head, right? Yeah, it's on the, we got it on the shelf right now. All right, okay, because uh, we, we just need to get well, the I mean, car you know, to we, you. We, you know, it's it's interesting as you know as a shop that that lives in this stuff. You know, it's a regular phone call that we respond to. That you know, we've learned what the recipe is, and you can kind of tell talking to somebody, some of where you need to go with them, things you need to detune with them, and and options that they need to look at. So, I mean, this is definitely not uncharted land by any means. It's something that we, we definitely have some authority on because we we do it quite often. And we know what lives and what doesn't. We also don't want to see people waste money on things that they just don't need. I mean, you're, you know, you don't, you're not building a drag car, you know. So it's the, the way it spends its life is a little bit different than a, a max effort car. So, you know, it's a difference between, a, you know, a $15,000 billet block and, a, you know, 
five thousand dollar dart block or something. You know what I mean? Yeah, you gotta right. use some smarts in it. But hey, Howard, let me ask you a question because we got you know our chat room's going a little bit crazy, and we got guys arguing with each other about turbo or supercharger. Um, a motor like this, if, if it's big enough, it's got enough compression and uh, to make that kind of power, you don't need that big a, a set of turbochargers. I would imagine that this thing could be pretty sporty right from, you know, down low. Uh, there's not going to be any kind of turbo lag problem with this thing, right? To make eight, 850? No. no, I mean, the definition of turbo lag means, oh, my God, I picked the wrong turbo for the motor. Right. That's really what tur- turbo lag is just a, 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 is, is a byproduct of poor engineering is all that is, right. you know, and, you know, and obviously if, if a guy's building a max effort race car and it doesn't make power below 3000 and therefore it would have lag, it really doesn't have lag because that's not where it was intended. Right. So, he just puts it on the converter and lets, lets it rip. Yeah. yeah. So, because he's, because, you know, you got to move that. I mean, obviously a turbo, if you, if you get too far on the big side, it's all up around. If it's too small, it makes a lot of, you know, quick responsive boot and then it dies up on top and you got to find that balance. And, you know, that's, something else we've got some experience with and you know you do get to a point where you're going to hit a wall you know and then you gotta you know you gotta make a change you know i I mean again the the turbos today are so well engineered and the combinations of the compressor wheels and the turbine wheels are so various now that it's kind of hard to not if you're if you're smart with it, not come up with the right size turbo to fit the job. You know, yeah, you, I figured that. Um, and and b- by the way, my the guys are they're all yelling at me now, like they're not arguing. I didn't mean you guys are arguing like uh, you're going to be fighting with each other. It just seemed like you guys were talking about. Um, somebody said something about turbo lag. It went by too fast. But anyway, sorry guys that you uh, got butt hurt so quick. <laughs> I <laughs> bunch of pussies. Well, like the the centrifugal <laughs> the centrifugal blowers are interesting, but it seems like. And I'm not knocking the centrifugal blower guys. It seems like they can be a little bit problematic. Like I remember that as soon as we put synchronous belts on them, started breaking shit left and right. And and my idea, <laughs> fucking Hester. What? What do you say? <laughs> Said the man with the skull. <laughs> <laughs> um, we put the synchronous belts on and just started breaking shit. And it was always gear change. You know, broke it because a sudden change of speed of the impeller. And, you know, I, I had talked about a Sprague before ETI even made one for the real stuff. So, I mean, I'd, I'd like to, you know, a, a supercharged side of things to me is neat and they make a great street car, but I like the, and I'm sure you're probably going to agree that the adjustability of a turbocharger, I mean, it's kind of, you know, a couple little tweaks. I mean, look at what they can do with a factory turbo car that yeah. comes off the factory. And then all of a sudden a guy oh, does you know. two minutes of work and the thing's in the tens. All right. Yeah, perfect examples. We had a customer uh, a couple months ago um, buy a brand new Z28, and before it came in, we already had put together a package for him. We we yanked the motor and we did you know a rotating assembly in it, and we did a couple turbos on it. And um, you know this guy likes roll hitting it, and God only knows that that the the new Z28 is a little bit doggy at you know 455 wheel. And um, you know we set that thing up with one of those AMS 2000 boost controllers that we use a ton of. And we, we, we referenced it based on mile an hour. So no matter where this guy was on the road, we had we had curved the controller to put down exactly what it needed for power to handle what, the tire that was on it. Wow. So you want to talk about a fun car. I mean, you know, this guy goes and hits this thing at 50, and maybe it puts down, you know, 680 to the tire. And if the guy whacks it at 70, it puts down, you know, 750 to the tire. And <laughs> That's pretty cool. Power on. That is pretty cool. I mean, and again, this is something you're not going to do with a supercharger. It's, it's going to be all in or not. So, um, gotcha. and again, I'm not trying to dismay that superchargers are no good. I just, I mean, they have their function. And, you know, I, I, when a guy wants a street car and he's talking, you know, 800,000 wheel, I mean, we're so far off from tire technology to put a 800 to the tire, you know, in a street environment that you have to control it through power management. Yeah. Which, you know, I, I can't do with a supercharger. So that, that's why it, it's a it's a primal uh, ingredient for you know, when a guy says, I want a badass street car and I don't want to die in it. You know, plus from a safety factor of the motor, I mean, we tie in, you know, uh, you know, air fuel, fuel pressure, God forbid, you know, a pump takes a shit or, you know, something's going on with the car. If we set the electronics up right, I mean, it'll just dump all the boost out before you can do any damage. So now, now is that something that can be done in a factory computer? Or is that with auxiliary controls? No, I mean, that's, that's, no, I mean, the, the boost control function is pretty, it's its own mad scientist control anyway. I mean, that, that AMS 2000 is, 
probably on, you know, 60, 70% of the cars that run out, run it like lights out up in Georgia, you know, that eighth mile race or they're all running Seb's controller in it. I mean, it's a smart piece. Okay. It's its own separate computer just to run the turbo system. Okay. All right. Well, I mean, we talked about it last time. So, and we talked about it in the very beginning. 4LADE, stop fucking around. Uh, understood. <laughs> I mean, consider that done. Um, rear end side of things to handle this. Um, I, I had questioned the Ford nine inch rear thing. And you said, look, not needed with an automatic. You don't have to worry about it. You know, put money into a center section and you'll be fine with a Corvette center section. Is that still, are we on path with that? Yeah, I mean, you know, my, you know, my Corvette before we put the uh, Power Glide and the, and the nine inch in it. I mean, I was singing that thing into the eight forties at, you know, one hundred and seventy two miles an hour with a stock diff in it, <laughs> over and over and over again. You know, I mean, it it worked, and the C five actually has some better options in the diff. So I don't know if I would go. You know, for the few times you're going to go to English Town to run the car with a real sticky tire tire and try to leave hard, it's not worth the bullshit. I mean, okay. I just, you know, yeah, it's still an automatic. So yeah, so just half shafts and you know the beef up parts that are required to make it. Yeah. Okay. And and this, and this also goes you know hand in hand with the conversation we get all the time about you know oh do I need axles? I mean what are you doing with the car? I mean if you want to go out there and do, like roll hit this thing, it's nowhere near the loads that you get that, like leaving off a trans brake at four thousand. You okay. know what I mean? So okay, yeah. hypothetically, in case anybody from GM is listening, I know a guy. Who's got a yellow four? You know a guy. I know a guy who's got a yellow four twenty seven Corvette that drives it as hard as possible whenever it leaves the garage. I understand fully that you know when you have that kind of power, you kind of can't drive something like that. I guess what I'm trying to say is, I would be much like this guy. Not me, of course. I would never drive my no no car hard. <laughs> if anybody from no, GM no, is no. listening now, we're in a motor trans Hypothetically clutch. Hypothetically speaking, yes. I will be driving it hard. So, I mean, I am going to err towards the side of stronger componentry than, mm -hmm. than it should, it should work. Now, obviously when you got a street tire on a street, you're not dead hooking. You're not beating the hell out of thing. It's a lot harder to break shit. You want to break shit, put a tire on it. I get it. So, but if, if you tell me, look, we've done, and I know like exactly what Howard said, I'm right there with him. I used to have a million people call up and be like, how much to do this? Yeah. What do you want? Uh, I need a motor for this. Okay, this, 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 and this, and this. Okay, click, done. He's done this before. Right. So, I mean, everything that we're talking about, reliability for general street use, driving hard with a street tire, we'd be okay? Yeah. I mean, you know, we, we, we see it all the time. I mean, I mean, the thing that really kills, you know, drivetrain parts is like wheel hop. You know, a hard launch. Even a hard launch doesn't always kill something, because especially in an auto car with a, with a good tire on it. You know, it's like Tom said. I mean... If you watch our car run down the track, even with a you know a 120, 60 foot, I mean, yeah, it, it's leaving, but it's smooth. Yeah, you know, and um, you know, and you and and the reality is, is you know, to go take this car down the road at 60 miles an hour and whack an automatic with a converter, making 12, 13 pounds of boost, you're gonna end up in the weeds anyway. So we're gonna have to rely on some kind of you know again power management that knocks some power out of it. So now you're not putting as much down to the tire. So you're, you're, you're less vulnerable for breakage. So yeah. this is a big picture. This is all about the implementation and the, and, and the control functions that we have to, you know, to, to monitor the power and let it out where it needs it. And know? that's what, exactly why I'm talking to you, because I mean, for me, I could figure a lot of this shit out overdoing it 20 times, <laughs> you know, like screwing everything up and trying to figure out how to do the programming and breaking shit. But there's, you know, there's a time that you got to talk to the right people and the, you came so highly recommended from Tom. I can't even tell you. It makes you wonder if you're the guy that sent him the scarf. It's, uh, <laughs> it, yeah, he, and, and then of course the piece with Hank Manley's car, you know, that, that really helps him at my decision. Who's going to take care of all this. Um, when we bring it down there, let's, uh, you know, now's a good time. It's 20 degrees up here. Yeah. Just drive it, drive it down there and trailer it down and just trailer go, it, go to, drive it down and get a, uh, one of the things that fly an airplane. Uh, oh yeah, we can do that too. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I, we, we, just, we had the helicopter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, got, I got a guy. I, got, I have a guy that's up and down the East Coast like regularly. That'll that you know when when the time comes that goes basically from Albany down to here all the time. So we have a we have a racket. We have a guy that gets vehicles all over the place. Yeah, we could just fly down, hang out with Howard for a little while, and then go to the yeah. beach. Where where is he? Outside here, East Coast. East, East Coast. Okay. Yeah. yeah. 
Daytona near there or no? No, way, way, uh, south. way south of that. Right. Just above Fort Lauderdale. Fort, Fort Lauderdale. Yeah. yeah. Fort Lauderdale area. Okay. Yeah. That's it. Cause like we're, we're probably going to be going down there in February. Just remember, well, if, if I don't go with you, just remember, you got to check out Hialeah. That's where you got to be. It, there's got to be some kind of little bit of joke to that. There is. Is that like a place where you would go with the scarf and you with the nail polish? Is that that? No, no, okay. no. It's a place you, you for that. Place, yeah, it's a place <laughs> where you go where you get shot at. Yeah. Okay. Uh, trying to think if there were any other. Oh, tires. What kind of tire can I get in this thing without putting a stupid flare or anything on it if it's got the, the little we tubs gonna, in it? I thought we were going to mini tub it. We are going to mini tub it, but there's, I read, you know, the problem is these fucking forums, you just get such a bunch of jerk offs. You, you can't can, read for what? Well, then did how, we not go over this? I understand this. You but, idiot. But you you have to, if you don't know anything, you go to the internet and look, I Googled or Wikipedia a fucking 4L80 trans versus a 6L80 and they said they were same. He said they're not. Wait, I have an idea. Yeah. Howard, can these things be mini tubbed? Well, I know they can. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Lingefelter's got a nice little setup. Okay, so why, why, why are you going on the floor? You stop. You, when, you're an idiot. Because I want to know. We what, got the right guy on the on the line. That's why I'm asking if you'd shut your hole. <laughs> <laughs> so ha, could I put like the the Z06, like for my 427, that size tire back there under the wheel well? Uh, That's a pretty big ass tire. Um, it, I mean, it might have to, I don't know. I mean. I'm trying to remember. I mean, it's been so long since the C5. I can't remember what what was getting stuff. I think it was like a 315, and the Z6 right. uh, comes with a 325. It, it's probably close. I think it's got a 335. See, that's why I was bringing this up, Tom, because people were saying, "Yes, you can get a 335." No, you can't. 315. You call Lingenfelter and find I, out. I, I think it can put a 335. That number sounds. But I, your Z6 came with a 325 on it because we were always putting 345s on them with a with a uh, 13 inch rim in the back, which I think is going to be way too big for the car. But, um, but as far as tire, I mean, I don't know, we we're kind of fans of Mickey Thompson tires ourselves, but, yeah. um, you know, there's any kind of drag radio, but again, it doesn't matter what tire you use. It you still got to control the power. You yeah. know, you are back to that again. Okay. You know? Okay. Well, Howard, let me give you a, a in-studio visual just now. Mike and Tom were giving each other the bird. No, I think Mike was Flipping giving the bird, the Tom bird. was receiving. Because, <laughs> exactly. Because I know right where you were going, Dickhead. You're like, what are you looking for? You could talk to him. Because it looked like it was right on the edge of what tire could you put on it. Yeah, and, and I, you said you were going on forums to find out. And I said, you're an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> and I was right, like usual. Oh, yeah. You guys have way, there's way too much tension in that. <laughs> oh, oh, way too much <laughs> testosterone, <laughs> even oh, with the cool. scarf. No, we're good. I'm going to take the scarf off in a minute and punch Mike in the throat. <laughs> 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 um, let's go to the suspension question. <clears throat> I know we're not going to be using the factory leaf springs. So coil over kit. And we had talked, uh, I had actually looked at all this stuff, but the tubular front end stuff, have they gotten any better on that? Like that it's not like, I, I think the question was, was it a drag only piece? Was it a, cause I mean, that opens up a lot of real estate to make things easier, doesn't it? Yeah, but we, you know, again, we, we we already know what we need to do. We can get everything by what's there, and I think you're getting into a part that definitely lends itself. The geometry of some of those tubular ones are really kind of set up to go forward in a straight line and not like, you know, you know, it's not that you couldn't drive. I mean, you know, you can drive anything on the street. I love the guys who are like, oh, is that street legal? It's like, what the hell does that mean? Yeah. yeah. But, you know, I, I, I think you're better off leaving with the stock cradle on there, coilovers on it, and, you know. Because, you know, part of the equation here, we've spent all this time talking about the engine and the and the power, you know, control function. But, you know, you, like you said, you said you want to handle and you want it to ride good. So, yeah. you know, now we got to shift to the suspension. Yeah. So, well, I mean, the, the coilover stuff, it, it looks like that's where everybody goes, which to me was a little strange. And, I mean, I, I understand it. but Why? Th- well, because those cars, they weren't made to be held up by the shock mount. They were made to be held up by the leaf spring. I know, but it's a frame point. What's the difference? Yeah. Well, I, I didn't know. I don't, again, looked at the car from underneath a bunch of times, wondering where stuff would fit. The people on the forums just don't understand it, Howard. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, that would be a jab. I mean, any, any, any <clears throat> true performance car out there that, you know, is that, you know, road race and stuff, they're all running an independent, you know, coil adjustable setup. I mean, it gives you that flexibility. And I'll tell you. You know, it was years ago, we we did a, a tech article with Vet Magazine where we put coilovers on, on the Z06 that you guys see me run on, on the track now. Mm-hmm. And the car had twin turbos on. It made about 950 wheel, you know, you know uh, stick car. 
And I was so impressed on how that car would lay power down on the street when we switched over to coilovers versus uh, a transverse leaf spring. Okay. You know, it was actually a it was actually a turning point for me, not you know, to start giving more credit to the chassis instead of just pumping all this power through the car. So, you know, it just it gave it gave the car some stability and just the way it transferred power, it really, you know, the car stuck better. It was pretty cool. All right, particular brand you're partial to? Um, well, you know, we've gotten the gamut with a few companies and to be honest with you, like we have our 16 Camaro here right now. And we just built our own custom coilover setup on the car. Mm-hmm. It's pretty badass. Yeah. You know, we got kind of fed up with different things and, uh, but there's, there's obviously a number of options. I mean, the C5 has been, you know, you're, you're two generations back already in car. So anything that's been out there and done has been done and figured out there. So, um, right. Well, because all the circle track stuff, I mean, you know, shock manufacturers out the ass, they'll be, you know, I know we can get anything we need made and, you know, damping, whatever. I'd like to use the adjustable stuff. And like, I know we, we had used a lot of Bilstein stuff. I, I don't know how their coilover kits are, but I, I don't know. We'll look into that. So, okay. Yeah, I mean, any, anything that we're going to do will be adjustable. I mean, that's, that's the reason why we're going through this is to have that adjustability. I mean, just to bolt on a set of coilovers is, is you might as well just leave the transverse leaf and a shock in there. So, yeah. Um, it really comes down to, you know, do you want single adjustable, double adjustable? I mean, there's, you can go in pricing and, and almost double pricing sometimes on coilovers. And, but if you're not going around road Atlanta, then you don't really need the big one. You know what I mean? Right. Or a street car. So. All right. What other, what other tidbits do we need to complete this thing? Uh, no, the, one of the listeners just wanted us to ask yeah. Howard if he could make it the new Camaro that look, look any better. Any better. <laughs> <laughs> If what? If you can make the new Camaro look any better, because I and a lot of people think it's ugly, but whatever. Yeah, I mean, you know, unfortunately, GM has a pretty good history of just blowing the looks of stuff. I mean, I like the front end dead on. I mean, you know, we've we've had ours on the rack, so we've been really, like, picking it apart at, like, eye level. Yep. I think the back of the car looks like a Mustang, and, you know, and, of course, sides of these cars just lose it because of all the side impact stuff. I mean, it, you know, they struggle, but... I just feel like they're so freaking lazy with their designs. They're just like, something's not right with that company. I mean, it's always been like that, you know? Yep. Agreed. I mean, the new Mustang to me, I love that car. Me too. I've been talking about that for, for weeks now. It's beautiful. You know, and never mind that we're, you know, we're GM guys. I mean, I, I think the car is like, every time I see one, I I want to, you know, I, I take a double take and look at it with the lights and everything else, but it is what it is. I mean, I, I can't turn the cheek on it. And one thing about Camaro people, the Camaro people are way, way, way more like loyalists than I think the Corvette guy is, <laughs> to be honest with you. We've seen yeah, this. You know, they just I think so too. they hang in there through all the abuse and even though the car may not be the the punch that we thought, they're gonna buy it. Yeah. yeah. And the sure. new car is amazing. I mean it's the interior in it. I mean it's a you know, we brought ours to the track, we went, you know, twelve forties with it, we just rolled it off the we, we, you know, we drove up there, we rolled to the starting line, no burnout, didn't turn off track control, AC on, I just whacked it and it went 1240. That's pretty good. See, man, that's, that's like, it's actually discouraging that things have gotten that fast, like just from the factory. I mean, I mean, it, it's good, but like I look at, you know, a few years back, I bought a 427 Corvette, so a pretty good, pretty good unit. Forget it. You know, like overnight things like regular Corvettes got faster. It's just, I don't know. It just sucks. I guess it, you never win. Howard, you know you know a guy named you know a couple uh, Deb and Doug Schultz. Yeah, yeah, yeah they, very well. Okay, they, yeah, they just uh, they just shouted out to you. They're they're in our chat room too. Uh, and I, yeah, I they're act- awesome. They're awesome. Uh, they were um, from Wisconsin. They bought one of our uh, HTR four twenty seven cars, black gold stripe, gold interior, and uh, they've been very supportive of. The program we had in New York, I know they bring the car to a lot of shows and stuff, and they have a good time with it. Good good couple. Yeah, good. That's cool. Yeah, they're, yeah. they're, they're listening. They want to shout out to you. I actually have a guy who, uh, who was on hold who would like to ask a question. Um, he asked me to ask, but uh, let, let me see if I can bring him in here. Hold on. Frank, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Hey Frank, uh, you're on with Howard. Ask him. Uh, ask him what you were asking me in the chat room. Hey Howard, it's Frank SLP, buddy. How are you? Hey Frank, what's up, buddy? <laughs> what's happening, man? I just we got some Jersey here, man. Just chilling out. Got your email on the uh, podcast. Just thought I'd join. Really great stuff, guys. Man, really, really entertaining. The last couple 
minutes here I've been on, but uh, I was just, you know, kind of checking back with you, see how you thought of the new DI motor on the Camaro and, and where you're heading with that. And, you know, what do you think so far? You had it for a couple of weeks now, so. Yeah, well, I mean, j- just to preference it, I mean, Frank, uh, Frank's been in this uh, squirrel's nest. We, we, we've, we've got a pretty good relationship. We just saw each other at SEMA and PRI, and when he comes down there, Frank's been uh, working with uh, SLP for quite some time, and a uh, big part of their sales and marketing and stuff. So it's cool that you got on the phone. I forgot you guys are all up in the same neck of the woods up there. So, um, But as far as the Camaro, I mean, it really is just another clone of the C7. It isn't like the motor something miraculous and you know, that, that's the thing with GM. Everything is just like a, you know, they, it's the same ca- cardboard box and the same padding inside. They just change the wrapper sometimes. So, um, you know, I, I think, again, like I had mentioned, these guys, I mean, we were we were due for another Camaro. I think the last couple of years of Camaro sales were getting flat. And I just find out they made a half a million Camaros for the Gen 5, though. That's a lot of freaking cars. Um, and the new one is just, I mean, you get in that thing and just the, the interior and the electronics and the radio and the new eight speed in it. I mean, it's, you know, it's, a uh, it's about eight or nine grand more than what a fifth gen was back when they came out. So I think the demographic of customers is going to move up a little bit, but that's not a bad thing either. But, you know, um, yeah, we've got ours under, uh, under some surgery right now. You'll, you'll probably hear about that in the next couple of weeks when we hit the track with it. We're kind of, we're in it to win it. So overall, Howard, do you, you like the new Camaro? With the, I mean, everybody, Tom breaks my balls about looks or whatever. And I honestly haven't looked at it that that seriously. But I mean, nice car overall, like features and how it works and just a, as, a, as a vehicle. Yeah, I mean, you know, when you get in it, you know, it's like, you know, again, coming from like this, our C7 and stuff, which was a huge interior, you know, upgrade from what, Cor- you know, Corvette had prior. I mean, they carried all that into the Camaro. So, I mean, we got ours with a red and black interior. I mean, it's racy and you know, all the digital dash and, and the air conditioned seats and, you know, all that, all that, you know, luxury that was coming in some of the higher dollar cars is now in the car. And I got to tell you, it, you know, again, I could say this, I mean, I'm used to driving stuff, with a lot of power. It's a really zippy fun car. I mean, it really, it really rolls out pretty good for what it is. Um, you know, like I said, to click off a 1240, you know, with a stock tire and just, you know, you know, out in the heat like that. I mean, that's, what more can you ask for for a car like that? You know, the pony car. Yeah, no doubt. I like it. All right. You know, like you said, the styling, I mean, yeah, there's some things that we're changing. You know, we've got a, a, an arrow package we're putting together and some things to try to, like, you know, make it look more aggressive. And then hopefully next year when the ZL1 comes out, they 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 throw in a little bit of what they did to the Z28 and kind of widen it and, you know, make it look a little sexier because the Z28 is pretty cool looking. I yeah. like that car. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, Frank, anything else for Howard? You guys know each other, so it's no, kind of... <laughs> I just uh, I dig the show and I just look forward to some more uh, more changes, you know, of the Chevy stuff coming out and uh, CTSV especially. Um, like you said, it's a $100,000 GM product and uh, just glad to see that direction, you know, trying to stay up with the, uh, with the other uh, makes and models, so. Now, if they'd only make a diesel SUV, I'd be happy. That's all I'm waiting for. Well, Just, they've been rumoring that for a while. That, that, like a, um, you know, like a Tahoe kind of something with a Duramax, right? That's what you're talking about? Yep. I've been holding on to my excursion, yeah, they, fixing everything. They killed that again this year. They made it a fleet-only deal. I know. With, with the three-quarter ton. But they still didn't put a diesel on it. I don't, I don't know what the hell. You know? God. Ah, irritated. All Frank, right, Frank. When are you uh, when are you coming back down for a road trip? Remember, we got to go hit the hit the zoo up in Palm Beach and go harass the animals. Remember? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we do need to do that. I guess my next trip will be West Palm. I've been uh, been out to the West Coast three times in the last month, and I'm heading back out there now. So, um, probably uh, you know West Palm Beach for Barrett. Um, try to get down and see you. Yeah, All right. that's not till March. So, all right. Well, thanks for calling, Frank. We appreciate it. I'm glad you liked the show, and uh, you know we'll keep we'll keep trying to make it better every week. Like us on Facebook. <laughs> thanks for calling. <laughs> All right, see you, buddy. That's cool. Frank's good people. Yeah, and SLP. That's uh, that's not an unknown name by no, any means. No, you know what? You know what's, you know what's funny. I, I've I've known Frank for actually quite a few years, but when I first knew him, I didn't really know him as a, as like as on a friend level. I remember sitting at Denoyer Chevrolet's dealership up in Albany when we were building those 427 Camaros and we'd be sitting in the Denoyer's office 
and there'd be two red line cars on the showroom floor, my orange one parked out front, and Frank would come rolling in with the SLP Camaro, you know, trying to drum up the business. And I sometimes I felt a little funny because we, we had red line HDR cars all the way around the dealer. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, at the same time, I think it built some, some respect that we're still in the business, we're still doing that stuff. And then, you know, we've, we've done some stuff with SLP. I think they're, they're, on a, they're trying to make a little bit of a comeback. I don't know if you know that Roush bought them a couple of years ago. So um, they're trying to, you know, turn a corner and try to be a little more innovative. I think they lost some steam for a little bit, but they're, they're working on it, you know. But cool, Frank's cool. been there for a while. He's a, he's a trooper with them. All right. Well, that was, uh, it was really nice that, uh, that he called in. So it's good. All right. Well, I guess, look, yeah, the only thing left to do is... So that just proved that people actually do listen to this show. Oh, I, I got to tell you, it's, it's kind of, it's really, I mean, none of us sitting here ever thought that we would have the reach that we have. I mean, you know, I'll share it at times. There's 20,000 downloads of an episode quick. I mean, it's mm-hmm. kind of, a, I mean, and you know, you say, well, 20,000 as far as the world population goes, it kind of sucks, but it's we're, a, we're even famous in Utah now. <laughs> yeah. And Utah has actually picked up. Good. <laughs> Maine has dropped off. I guess is they did just don't bother anymore. No, I guess. <laughs> but it's uh yeah, it's it's pretty amazing. There's a uh, there's and you know worldwide too. A lot of people, a lot of people from Australia. I mean, I know they're all car nuts. They are good bunch of blokes down there. Blokes, blokes, blokes. Yeah, I thought that was English. What they call them. no. All right. Well, I don't know anything. No. All right. Well, I guess the only thing left to do is uh, bring the car down there. Yeah, bring the car down there with some money. Yeah. Well, I mean. You know, one of the things that we're we're big advocates of is like, you know, I know we've kind of skimmed across this and took a bunch of crayons and, you know, wrote all over the wall. But, you know, when we get a little closer to it, you know, we'd like to put this all on paper, kind of define it, break it all down. You know, we we kind of know what this costs. You know what I mean? We kind of know what we're up against. It's not one of these things like, well, you know, drop it off and just, you know, keep sending us money. I mean, we, yeah. we're kind of goal-orientated. So, you know, when you're getting closer, we'll uh, – We'll break off this uh, radio podcast here, and we can go back and forth and come up with it. And that way, you can, you know, you know what what we're up against. Sure, absolutely, us, you know? absolutely. And I mean, like, you know, uh, again, I can't stress enough. Thank you, and uh, you know, coming recommended from Tom is always a good thing because he sees everybody. You know, he goes yeah, all over. I there's appreciate that. Yeah, there's even been a couple of people that I'm not going to talk about now, but over the years, there's actually been quite a few people. See, Tom. You know about this guy? He's like, oh, oh no, no, no. <laughs> you know, I mean, he's pretty quick to tell you. Howard, when I go down there, uh, I got to tell you about a guy that Mike thought about for like three seconds. And uh, I just recently sent him an old business card to this guy. You know who it is. We'll talk. You and I'll talk about it. It's actually funny. I got a picture of his old business card. It's hilarious. Uh, <laughs> always good to have a little hatred. Yeah. Well, Howard, Howard, thanks for calling, man. You're always informative. And you, you, you have me going. I might want a Corvette one day. Oh boy, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm a I'm a Camaro man, you know. Not the new one, no. I agree. I agree with Tom. Don't really like it. I like the Mustang better. Yeah. You got a Mustang? Why don't you buy a new Mustang? They're nice. The Mustang, the Mustangs look good, and the, and the um, what is that? The Challenger. Yeah, yeah the Challenger. You know, the, they they really took the well, retro, you know what? We'll, took we'll, the retro uh, look. We'll check in. We'll check in in a couple of weeks after uh, some stunts we're going to pull with this new Cadillac and. Uh, the new Camaro in the next, you know, a couple of weeks here, which again, which is the benefits of being down in South Florida this time of year. Uh, you know, we're not dealing with that weather, so we can go out there and kind of execute stuff and we'll revisit direct injection and, and, you know, where you can go with these cars. You yeah. Know? So, oh, cool. That'd be great. You know. Gotcha. Yeah. And we, I, again, I always appreciate the opportunity. I love when Tom sends me a last minute, like, Hey, Jan. And it's like, <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I enjoy talking to you guys. We obviously like the industry and the business and, you know, it's fun to it's fun to pass on some knowledge and, and learn some stuff. Well, so. do yourself a favor. Not that you probably have to at this point, but give yourself a nice shameless plug. Like, how can people find you? How can they contact you? You know, if they've got anything uh, they need done. Well, we're we're really not too hard to find. We've been kind of saturating the uh, the electronic ways pretty good. I mean, you know, Redline Dash Motorsports dot net is our our website. Um, we're pretty busy with. Uh, social media with Instagram, our YouTube page. Uh, we do a ton of videos internally here and, uh, you know, we, and we do quite a bit with some of the media with, you know, vet magazine, some of the Camaro magazines and, and super Chevy. So, um, you know, we're just enjoying that integration. I don't, I think if anybody goes to Google and just types in Redline Motorsports, they're going to find us on, on top. And obviously our focus is late model GM performance stuff that, that lives and, uh, try to give people an honest uh, shake on, on the value of what this work is. And, and deliver, you know, I guess 
we're not for everybody. I mean, you know, if a guy's looking for the rock bottom number, that's what you're going to get because yep. we don't really shortcut anything. It's, and not, not for nothing, that ain't the customer you want either because that never works out good. Yeah. So. No, I mean we have, and I, if I've learned anything in life, it's it's to to tell people no and try to let them down easy and say hey, this isn't a good fit for us. And sometimes they go away kicking and screaming, and they're the, usually the ones that want to start shit with you because they got rejected. But I'd rather stay home and watch Oprah. You know? <laughs> hey, do me one favor before we go. Uh, well, yeah. a- after we go, actually, tell Roy and Nishad I said hello. They're probably together tonight, right? <laughs> Are they together tonight? Just get them his rotating assembly already, will you? Yeah, got it. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> All right, Howard. Well, thanks. We'll uh, we'll talk more, and uh, we'll figure out where to go next. That's it. Sounds good. Have a good night, guys. Thanks, thanks man. Thanks. All right, bro. See Thank ya. you. Bye. He's a really good guest. Yeah. I know. It's great. Energetic, engaging. I know. Knows other people that call in. Yeah. I mean, why are your headphones falling off, Tad? They're like rotating forward on you. Next thing, you're going to be on your nose. <laughs> you know, <clears throat> this is a little off-topic thing, but... <laughs> I'm going to find out what kind of scarf McDreamy wears so you can get oh, that from my Lord, <laughs> Lord, Lord. Where's the, ex, the, the outro? Yeah, we can. <laughs> you know, you guys can fuck oh, with me all man. you want, but I do watch Grey's Anatomy. I really oh, don't care. Lord, I do. I watch it. Mercy. I'm not wearing a scarf. I ain't getting my nails not polished, yet. but I'll, I will watch Grey's Anatomy. All right. All right. Well, that was really good with Howard. Um, really covered over the same stuff we had before but now at least we got an idea where we're yeah, going now we, everybody well, can hear it we yeah. captured we captured it this yeah, time we so. captured it this time <laughs> so all right well thanks we'll uh we'll be back next week monday night see ya later later no he said it's a screw subaru scarf <laughs>